The last lesson was all about testing whether a function was continuous at a point. And today we'll use that understanding to talk about whether a function is differentiable at a point. Okay, so we need to just add a little bit to our notes here. And the first thing I want you to sort of make note of is the fact that um, a function must at least be continuous at a point to be considered differentiable at the point. So basically, if a function is not continuous at a point, then it's not even worth, worth testing for differentiability, okay? But, but a function can be continuous and still not be differentiable. So this is why I say the words at least. A function must be at least continuous at a point to be considered differentiable at the point, but it still can be continuous and still not be differentiable. And I'll explore why that is in a sec. So a function is only differentiable at a point if the limit of the derivative exists at that point. Go into this um, in further detail in a bit. So here's our hybrid function, y equals x for the values of x larger than or equal to zero, and y equals negative x for x less than zero. There's the um, function that actually is a specialist maths function there called um, the absolute value or mod function. Um, and um, we don't need to know that, but that's what those bars mean. It means that only take the positive value. But methods, girls, let's just worry about that notation there. That's all we need to know. So let's explore the difference between continuous at a point and differentiable at a point. So is the function continuous? Let's test it. So we'll go f of zero, because that's the point in contention. Okay, is x is equal to zero, because it's continuous everywhere else. So f of zero equals zero when I pop it in to there. Therefore, we're going to say that f of x is defined at x equals zero. So that's a good sign for continuity. Let's test the limit of the function from the left-hand side. So as I swing in from the left, I note that the y values approach zero. Let's test the limit from the right-hand side. So as I swing in from the right, it approaches zero. The f of zero value is the same as the limit from both the left and the right at x is equal to zero for the function. So we can conclude that the function function is continuous at x equals zero. All right, so that's a good sign. That means that it's worth pursuing a test for differentiability because the function is continuous at that point. I mean, if you can't see it visually, obviously, then that's a way to test for continuity. Okay, so now let's test whether the function is differentiable. So what we're going to do to do that is to test the limit of the derivative from the left and right. Now, the way to do this is to first consider what the derivative function will look like. So our gradient for all the values of x larger than or equal to zero, well, larger than zero at least, is going to be one. Okay, so let's pop that in. And for the values less than, the derivative of negative x is simply negative one. Let's graph that now. I know I haven't got the domain, but let's graph it. So for all the values of x larger than one, uh, or larger than zero, the gradient is one. For all the values of x less than zero, my gradient is negative one. Now, do you notice something about this? I'm gonna write something down here to show you. The limit as x approaches zero from the left-hand side now of the derivative is equal to. So let's go with the derivative function because this is what this is the graph of. And note that as I approach from the left-hand side, f dash x is equal to negative one, it gets closer and closer and closer to negative one. The limit as x approaches zero from the right 
the derivative function, not the original function, the derivative function is equal to one. Now notice that these are not the same. So what is the derivative at x is equal to zero going to be? What are we gonna say the derivative is? Is it gonna be one or is it gonna be negative one? Well, I don't know. I don't know what the derivative actually is going to be. And when I don't know, that's a sign for you to say, well, let's just not say that the derivative is true at that point. So what we're going to say is, I'm gonna open circle this and open circle this and say that I don't know what the derivative is at x is equal to zero. I know what it is for all the values of x larger than zero or less than zero, but at the point itself, I'm not sure. So we can summarize this with our domain of the derivative function and say that it's one for all the values of x larger than zero, and it's negative one for all the values of x less than zero, but at zero itself, don't know what the derivative is, so it's not defined. All right, draw a sketch of f dash where the graph of f is as illustrated indicate where f dash is not defined. So here we've got a function here on this side here. Uh, what's our function? Y equals, uh, is that positive gradient? 2x plus 2, I think. 2, 0, negative 1. Yeah, that's the function there. Y equals 2x plus 2. And this one here will be y equals negative 2x plus 2. All right, so the best way to um, do this is to sketch the uh, to start the equation. So f dash x equals, so what's our derivative of this part here? It's going to be two. So the derivative of this function here is two. The derivative of this function here is negative two. Let's graph it. f dash x versus x. So the derivative is two for all the values of x less than zero. The derivative is negative two for all the values of x larger than zero. Notice that the derivative or the limit of the derivative at x is equal to zero from the left-hand side and the right-hand side are two completely different values. So we say actually that the derivative is not defined at x equals zero. So our domain for the derivative function is going to be two for x less than zero and negative two for x greater than zero. At x is equal to zero itself, f dash x is not defined, i.e. I'm not going to allow you to do this. Not allowed. f dash zero, you can't put zero into my derivative function because I don't know what the derivative is. Is it going to be two? Is it going to be negative two? I don't know. I can't favor one over the other. That's a hard call to make, girls. Okay, so I basically just say, it's not defined there. All right, for the function with the rule, find f dash and sketch the graph of it. Okay, well, I always find that sketching f dash x is helpful, first of all, um, or not sketching it, um, doing it, first of all, is helpful because I need to sketch the derivative. 2x plus 2 and 2. All right, let's leave out the domain of the derivative just for the moment. And let's also sketch the original function. So it's going to be 2x plus 1, x less than 0. So that's a positive gradient. So that's what it looks like there with an open circle. Now this one here is a parabola. It's a perfect square. x, x, 1, 1, x plus 1, all squared, which will have a turning point at negative 1. Okay, y-intercept of 1 which means it continues on up like that. So it will go like that, but the values are only true for x greater than or equal to zero. So that point now is included as part of this. All right, so why do we do this? Well, we're gonna note that the function is continuous at the point, which is a good sign for differentiability. All right, so let's get or consider the graph of f dash x vx. Now, the gradient is 2 for all the values of x less than 0, so let's pop that in. And let's sketch this one here. So when x is equal to 0, it's going to be um, 0, 2. 
So it's going to be linear with a positive gradient y-intercept of 2 from this point on. All right, now notice something about the derivative function at x is equal to 0. The limit as I approach from the left and the limit as I approach from the right are both 2. I'm going to do this formally. The limit as x approaches 0 from the left of the derivative gets closer and closer to 2. The limit as x approaches 0 from the right of the derivative is also 2 at that point. So what can I conclude? The limit exists. Okay, so the function is actually differentiable at x is equal to 2. So, uh, at, at x is equal to 0, rather. So, for the values of x greater than or equal to 0, this is going to be my gradient. So, I can include the 0 this time and x less than 0. Alternatively, I could write it the other way, which is 2x plus 2. 2, x greater than 0, x less than or equal to 0. Either way, the derivative at x is equal to 0 itself is going to be 2. Okay, so it doesn't matter who that point belongs to at this time because it's both 2. Okay, let's make a little change to this last example. So as it is, we're looking for the values of x larger than or equal to 0. Let's just change that domain to be... Uh, 0 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 2. <clears throat> okay, so let's go ahead and proceed like we've been doing. So let's grab a derivative, 2x plus 2 and 1. Let's reserve judgment on the domain after we have a look at the function. So we've got a linear function here first of all. So let's grab or just do a quick sketch of f of x. So it's 1 and then 2x plus 2, uh, that's going to be x plus 1 squared. That's the same function as before. That's just that. Okay, so the function is continuous. Okay, let's do our derivative. All right, so what we've got, oh, let's actually do the restricted domain. So 2, 9, I think it is. 9, yep. Okay, so let's go with a gradient of 1 for all the values of x less than 0. So let's draw that in. 2x plus 2 for all the values of x more than 0. So it's going to look like that. So positive gradient or positive linear gradient. And where's it going to terminate? It'll stop giving derivatives at 2 because the function is not defined um, after that. Right, so let's put our domains in. So this is a gradient of 1 for all the values of x less than 0, <clears throat> and a gradient of 2x plus 2 for the values of x between 0 less than x. And here's something that is a little controversial, less than 2, i.e. I'm not actually going to allow you to do f dash 2. All right? Even though the function is defined at the value 2, right? So why not? Well, again, let's think about this in terms of differentiability at a point. When we're considering differentiability at a point, we go and test the limit. Rub that out. Made a little mistake there. We test the limit of, as x approaches 2 from the left, the derivative function. What's it going to be? It's going to be the gradient there. So 2, 2, 2 to 4 is equal to 6. Let's test the limit of the derivative from the right. So as I swing in from the right, I notice that the function actually doesn't produce derivatives there. So it's not defined. So for a derivative to be defined at an endpoint uh, or at a point, what has to happen is the derivative has to be the same from the left and the right. And because it doesn't exist on the right-hand side, we're going to say that f-2 dash is not defined. And that's why we don't include that. Moral of the story, basically at endpoints of functions, so if you've got a restricted domain function, the derivative won't be defined at an endpoint. If this was an endpoint or this was an endpoint, the derivative wouldn't be defined here.
So I would open circle that to say that f dash two does not exist. I'm not going to give you a derivative at that point. I'll give you derivatives all the way up to, but not including it. That's an often misunderstood thing, and it was something that was an issue on the U12 SAC this particular year. All right, so your work today will be to go through exercise 17G, do all of the questions, there's not many, and then commence on the chapter 17 review.